practice this a little bit with segments, let's go into our angles. Remember, the key here for all of your proofs is to see what have they given and how can I use that using your postulates, using your definitions, and using your properties. All right, so here what we have today is we have two angles. We have angle PIG and angle COW. And we're given that angle PIG and angle COW are congruent. We're also given that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. And what we want to prove is angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. All right, so we write our first statement, what we were given, pig is congruent to cow, one is congruent to four, and that was given. All right, now, we need to talk about measures, right? And we've started with things. So we need to transition here from the measure of angle pig is equal to the measure of angle cow. And the measure of angle one is equal to the measure of angle four. Because I can't start dealing with these angles unless I've gone to measurements. So I'm going to make that transition. How can I just go from the things are congruent to the measures are equal? Well, that's the definition of angle congruency. Or the definition of congruent angles. OK, now why do I want to do that? Well, because I need to define somehow how is these big angles related to these little angles. We got, we got to somehow tie that together. Well, we do know that by angle addition, we can add up these two angles together to add them to get the bigger angle. So we need to somehow bring in those little angles. That's how we're going to do it. So we know that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle pig. And similarly, we know that the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4 is equal to the measure of angle cow. Why are we doing this? Because we need to tie the numbers and the letters together. We need to tie somehow these things together so we can talk about the measure of angle 2 and 3. This is the only way we know how to do it. And this is by the angle addition property. Sorry, postulate. All right, the angle addition postulate. All right, why does this help us? Well, let's see what we have. We know that angle, the measures of angle pig and cow are congruent. Now, now check this out. If these two are congruent, so if the big angles are congruent, then that means these things here are the same as the big angles, right? So that means instead of writing the measure of angle pig, I can write this. I can substitute these things. I can say the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2, which is pig, right, is equal to cow, and cow was this, the measure of angle 3 plus the measure of angle 4, right? So I substituted the little pieces in for the big pieces since they're equal. So we're going to use substitution. This is the hardest one to see for students. It's the hardest one to see in general. We're substituting the pieces for the whole. It already says they're equal, so I'm just substituting the little pieces and the little pieces for the big pieces. It's a substitution. Okay? Mull that over for a while. All right, why do we want to do that? Now check this out. We've already been given that the measure of angle 1 and the measure of angle 4 are equal. Now, don't get stuck up on the symbols here. This is a 1, this is a 4. Remember, these are real physical numbers. So let's make something up. Let's say that this is 45 degrees. Well, if the measure of angle 1 is 45 degrees, the measure of angle 4 is 45 degrees, it's the same unit, which means this and this are the same unit. That means I can subtract that unit from both sides by the subtraction property. I can get rid of these things because I'm subtracting the same units. Okay? So if I subtract both sides, I'm left with the measure of angle 2 is equal to the measure of angle 3 because we use the subtraction property. Oh, hey, wait, wait, check this out. This is what we're going for, right? That means once we subtracted these out, these pieces must be equal. Now that makes sense too, right? If we're given that angle 1 is equal to angle 4, and the angles are congruent, what's left must also be congruent. 
Now, how do we go from the measures are equal to the angles are congruent? Definition of congruent angles. So now we can say angle 2 is congruent to angle 3 because their measures are equal by the definition of congruent angles. And we proved what we needed so we can put our finality box. And you know you love math.